find the edge and just trot right into your living room. 41-14, all Iowa State. And if you thought they were done there, nope. Purdy looking over the middle to, well, the senior. A man who embodies Iowa State football. Chase Allen, 35-yard pitch and catch, 48-14. A hug comes with it. And the seniors go out the right way in their last time on the field of Jack Trice, 48-14 your final. And the seniors totally fine with Brees stealing that limelight. So let's pull up that final once again. 48-14 Cyclones roll. Purdy 21 of 30, two touchdowns, solid day from him. Brees Hall 281 total yards. That's Incredible. both on the ground and through Incredible. the air. Found the end zone four times, as uh, Matt Campbell said. If, if that's his last game at Jack Trice, man, what a way to go out. Seniors enjoyed the show too. No, I mean, dude, for him to finish the season like that, like, that's, that's Brees Hall. It's, like, not fair for other teams. Sometimes, you know, when he's on, he's on, and no one can stop him. Like, I'm watching him, like, <laughs> this is crazy. But, I mean, man, like, he works his tail off, like, and he just, he continues to amaze people week in and week out. And so, um, I mean, I'm excited to see him play at the next level. And, uh, yeah, love that dude, man. For me, I've always looked up to them. Um, I started out as a, you know, 17-year-old kid, not really knowing what was going on, what, who to look up to. And, you know, those guys were always there. Guys like Brock, Mike, Greg, Charlie Chase, just always leading me in the right, in the right direction, keeping me humble, keeping me level. And, you know, they've, they've, they've all done a lot for me. So, Jeff, a lot of players, not just pundits, have said Brees Hall's probably done at Iowa State after this year. And, man, what a way to go. And, and he should be done after yesterday. I mean, if you're Brees Hall, you're going to be playing in a some type of bowl game, which is a, a fun bowl game, but it's not going to be the national championship. It's not going to be a playoff. You're going to be like a top 40 NFL draft pick. Dude, just don't put yourself at risk. I bet that's the last time we got to see Brees Hall as an Iowa State Cyclone. And man, if you were lucky enough to either be watching on TV or in person, soak that in because 281 yards is the sixth most total yards that has ever been performed by one human being in one game. And it's the first on that list behind Ennis Haywood, who's fifth. The other top four, Troy Davis, Troy Davis, Troy Davis, Darren Davis. And then Ennis Haywood and now Brees Hall. I mean, it is an incredible, incredible thing to just be able to watch a guy that is that good at the top of his game. Remember when we were, he came in and people were like, oh no, he's using Troy Davis's number. I think right. he honored it pretty well. I think he earned the right to use 28. It's funny too, because Darren Davis also wore 28. So yeah. Troy Davis was in 28, Darren Davis is in 28, Brees Hall's in 28. <laughs> Whoever decides to wear 28 next, man, you are stepping into some enormous shoes. Absolutely. And the other fun thing, 24 straight games with a rushing touchdown. In today's day and age, that is an NCAA record, mind you. Today's day and age where a lot of teams love to air the ball out that record might stand up for a long time. Well, and the incredible thing is everybody in the stadium knows that he's going to get the ball. It's inside the 10 yard line. Who's going to get it? It's 28 or it's 88. That's end of story. End of list. We know. And every defense has 11 sets of eyeballs on him and still managed to do it for 24 consecutive games. That is incredible. I mean, some guys would be lucky enough to have 24 career touchdowns, yeah. let alone having 24 consecutive games with a touchdown. And then also a big shout out to Jirel Brock, who's going to step into Brees Hall's shoes. He's just as dynamic of a back. But when you've got Brees doing all this, man, it's uh, tough to pull him out of the game. That's it, sure. it is impressive. You, and especially go back to David Montgomery, and then you pass it off to Brees Hall, and now whoever gets it next. Again, big shoes to fill, but a lot of history that they can start to walk into. Absolutely. All right, still to come, we're going to look back at the Hawkeyes. Big comeback win over in Lincoln yesterday.
right, thanks for joining us this morning. The Iowa Hawkeyes still had a lot to play for yesterday. The Big Ten West title up for grabs. They're guaranteed a share at least with a win over Nebraska yesterday. Plus, there's the whole idea of just handing the Huskers another loss in an already pretty dismal season for them. All right, let's get out to it. Logan Smothers, the starting quarterback, No Martinez. He's out with an injury. He doesn't matter. Smothers just runs it in 7-0. Then Caleb Shudak, well, he was the star of the show. 51-yard field goal. Jeff, it's a bad sign when I'm saying a kicker is the star of the show. Well, you're talking about the 2021 Iowa team, so special teams and defense are always the star. It was 7-3 after the Shudak field goal. Jansen for a yard out, 14-3. Things looking out of hand, 14-6, though. Shudak from 48. Then Petrus to Regani, a big gain here. And guess what? This is in the third quarter, so you're going to get another Shudak 36-yard field goal. 14-9. All right, field goal. There you go. Smothers now going to fumble the ball. Iowa actually recovers. So the defense kind of going to work here, doing what they do, creating turnovers. Then this is maybe a pivotal play if I've ever seen one. 21-16 at that point. Intentional grounding in the end zone. That's a no-no and a rookie mistake or a freshman mistake, I should say. 21-18 ball game. So Iowa back into it. Shudak, 44-yarder. That ties it at 21. Tyler Goodson had himself a day, just couldn't find the pater yesterday. Yeah, Tyler Goodson had 156 yards rushing. I mean, he was the offense. Iowa in the second half, I think, uh, up to this point had 34 yards and still managed to get 12 points because their defense and special teams are so good. But when 15 is playing like that, they have a chance to move on offense. And then wouldn't you know it, Spencer Petrus, the one yard plunge in. 28-21 football game. Nebraska knocking on the door though to try and tie it up. Guess what? INT, the ball Hawks show up big time. And man, Hawkeyes win it 28-21. They hold the Huskers scoreless in the second half. I mean, it wasn't looking good there for a bit, but Petrus and Padilla, they combined 13 of 27. Who knows who will start the next game for them? Yeah, and if you're a, a Cornhusker fan, I mean, I don't know how you made it through this season. <laughs> Nine single-digit losses, which is the most by any team in any season for single-digit losses since 1936. That is as heartbreaking of a season as any team has had in 80 years. You know what? Serves them right. <laughs> Just Good kidding. All right. Colin Cahill has more from Lincoln. And uh, what's next for the Hawkeyes? The Hawks did their job and they got the win on Friday. It might not have been the prettiest win of the season, but they got the 10th win overall on this long season. Now they become Gophers fans. Well, at least most of them. I didn't say that. I just thought I'll be, you know, hoping for the right outcome. <laughs> I mean, come on. I, you know, I work at Iowa. Right? I live in Iowa. 30 years. <laughs> There's only one team in the, in the Big Ten I really cheer for. I'll let you guess who it is. <laughs> okay. I mean, you got to be rooting for the Gophers, right? Um, if you're a Hawkeye fan, you know, to give us a chance to go to Indianapolis, uh, you got to be rooting for the Gophers tomorrow. I got to say, I'm going to be the biggest Gopher fan in the world tomorrow. We might not be able to have a whole team get together, but I'm sure there will be groups of just a bunch of teammates just watching the game together and making sure and cheering on the Gophers. Uh, so, go Gophers. And it's a pretty easy scenario. Minnesota wins. Iowa, they're going to Indianapolis in the Big Ten title game. If Wisconsin wins, Iowa, they're staying home, and we'll wait to see where they're going to go bowling. John, back to you. All right, thanks, Colin. I can promise you this. Iowa is going someplace warm for a bowl game, but more importantly, Wisconsin-Minnesota, pivotal game today. You know, it's like seven-point spread. We'll get to our picks a little bit later, but 3 o'clock kickoff, big one for them. Yeah, it's big, and they were talking about how much you're rooting, if you're an Iowa fan, an Iowa player, if you're rooting for Minnesota to pull the upset against Wisconsin. And that's kind of the fun thing. I mean, not fun. Uh, obviously, you don't <laughs> want to have to put it in someone else's hands. But the fun thing about the end of the season in college football is that all of these things have something to do with each other. Because you look at this game, and then you look at the one that's going to kick off at 11 o'clock out somewhere between uh, Ohio State and Michigan. Some may have heard about that one. Well, <laughs> that one determines who comes out of the East. Yeah. And so you have one game that determines this side, one game that determines this side, and there's so many different combinations that can happen. You just get to, I don't know, sit back and watch and enjoy. Again, some on pins and needles, some just as fans. The Big 10's that way, Big 12's that way too. Yeah, the Bedlam game tonight is a huge game. I mean, it's the same Ohio State, Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then Bedlam. I mean, those are the games that really are gonna shake up the playoff, shake up the New Year's Six, shake up who gets into championships. Because if Oklahoma State wins, Oklahoma's out. And yeah. then if Baylor then wins against Texas Tech, it's Oklahoma, Oklahoma, or Oklahoma State and Baylor. Well, if Oklahoma State wins and 
Baylor loses, then you get a rematch. So you have all these, again, just balls up in the air of seeing what happens, who wins, and who, uh, uh, who gets to go to whatever bowl game you have. So <laughs> it is a fun time to be a fan is just looking at all these things that are up in the air. Are gonna, gonna be a fun Saturday. You might as well just sit back and enjoy it. Looking forward to it. When we come back though, we're gonna talk more about the Iowa State seniors and what they've left behind and what they've accomplished. has put this program, and you're talking guys, what I heard Jake Hummel played 62 games here at Iowa State. Mike Rose has started every game for the last four years. Brock Purdy, like, man, these guys came here and blazed a trail. And so to me, is it special? Yeah, it's really special because they have never let it waver. You know, their resiliency, their toughness, their character, their courage, boy, it's really, really special. So, you know, yeah, it's got a special place in my heart because they believed in me. They believed in us, they believed in our staff, when not a lot of people really believed in this place. And I was like, Coach Campbell, don't you cry on me, because then I'm gonna start to cry, and then everybody else behind me gonna start to cry. So, but uh, no, it was, it was special, man. Just, to, uh, you know, someone who believed in me from the get-go, you know, before maybe, you know, anybody ever knew about me. So, you know, I give him a lot of credit for, you know, building this confidence that I have within myself. So I owe Coach Campbell a lot, and I appreciate him for the man and the coach that he was to me. Man, so many different things. Um, but you can't help but just, just reflect and smile and just take it all in and enjoy the people, man. It's, it's the people here that has made this journey so special for me. And so, um, you know, just trying to enjoy those guys last couple weeks with them uh, before we all kind of part ways, you know, be in touch over the phone, but it's not like being on the team and seeing around, being around each other every day. So I'm um, just trying to enjoy everybody. Some raw emotions there from uh, Matt Campbell. Awesome to see that, and, and obviously a, a class he cares deeply about. Like he said, they came in when Iowa State was laughing stock of, of college football, and look at where they're at now. Yeah, I think Chase Allen, like 15 years ago, I mean, committed when basically when Campbell started. It was kind of the first major recruit, and that was six years ago because of the whole COVID year and the super senior year and a red shirt and an injury year. And you have all these, I mean, this group has been through so much. Mm -hmm. And again, this isn't just unique to Iowa State. I mean, the, the last time potentially, depending, again, depending on what happens with Wisconsin and Minnesota, we don't know, but this is probably the last time that Iowa's players are going to be able to play together. And there is that one little soundbite I think Greg Eisworth had at the very end, which is you're going to be able to keep in touch on the phone. You're going to be able to kind of hang out in either each other's apartments while you're still here. But the feeling of being on a team is something that's irreplicable. You can't 
you can't describe what that feeling is like until you've had it. So it is one of those moments to just kind of soak in and you know to see that there is genuine care and affection between coaching staff to players, players to players. I mean, that's a thing that it is nice to see and that is what keeps the magic in college sports. Because again, a different factor. All these kids were 17, 18 years old when they started at this journey with Kurt Ferentz or Matt Campbell, and they have become who they are now largely because of those guys. So it is a really emotional moment, and it's great to see that there is some honoring that, that has happened back and forth between these guys. And they certainly leave the jersey in a better place now than when they got Absolutely. A lot of fun there. We'll get, get to our picks next, and we'll wrap things up here on Side Hockey Game Day. Next. Alrighty, let's get into the five picks. My pick five of the week. Final week of the season, I did not put my record up there because let's just avoid that. All right, Michigan plus seven and a half at the big house today, hosting Ohio State. This game going to decide the Big Ten East. I like Michigan to cover the seven and a half snowing up at the big house. It is a, a Midwesterners dream is a huge rivalry game and it's snowing. It's in November. Wonderful. I don't even care who wins. It's Straight out of NCAA football 2011. All right, Army Liberty over 53 and a half. Look, Army actually puts up points. It's kind of scary. So give me the over there. Duke plus 21 at Miami or hosting Miami. I like Duke to cover that one too. UTSA, the Roadrunners, going to run all over North Texas today. Minus 10, I like that pick. And then Minnesota, money line. I'm taking the homer pick because I want to see the Hawkeyes in the Big Ten title game. Well, this is also uh, not too far of a stretch because it is a rivalry game. So throw records out the window, even though both teams are good. But it's also senior day in Minnesota. Yep. So that's not a thing you want to take lightly. And <laughs> they're playing for something too. So so I don't know. That game is also going to be super interesting. Kicks off at three. So you have Michigan, Ohio State at 11, Iron Bowl in Minnesota, Wisconsin at three. Then you have Bedlam at 7:30. Get some turkey leftovers. Sit behind a TV and enjoy football the rest of the day. I got Okie State in the Bedlam game. Bedlam game. Also, really quick, big thank you to our entire crew here at Cyhawk Game Day. Everyone behind the scenes that makes this show really happen. Without them, this wouldn't be on the air. Our producers, camera ops. Of course, a big thanks to the Cyclones and Hawkeyes for the access. Thanks to Colin. Of course, Jeff, thanks for joining us again this year. We'll see you next year for Cyhawk Game Day.